If you are a kingdom-driven man, you are in a race and you are in a fight. You are created to be driven towards the goal of pursuing the upward call, of giving it your best, of reaching your full potential. And if that's you and you're committed to finishing well in the race and overcoming in the battle, then you're not going to want to miss today's show. I'm going to break down a key from scripture, which will give you the secret to overcoming in the battle and winning the race. If you're ready to rule, take dominion in life with Jesus as the standard, then listen up. We're going to break it down in today's show. Let's get into it. Hey guys, welcome to today's show of Raising the Standard. I'm back with another solo cast. We've been doing a few interviews lately, and I'm going to recommend you go back and listen to those. We've had some phenomenal guests on, and I have more planned for you as we move forward. I want to show you something today in the scripture that, honestly, I've been obsessed with. This is something that has caught my attention, and I can't let it go. And we see throughout the Bible, there's many metaphors that we can grab a hold of. And we'll find that the writers of the New Testament, specifically the Apostle Paul, who I will be referencing today, makes use of analogies and metaphors for us as men because he was always seeking to put things in easy to use language and accessible terms for the listeners and the readers of his day. So he uses metaphors, he uses analogies from current events, and he actually says, I become all all things to all men. So he speaks in the language of the day so that nothing would go over their head and that they would truly understand the concepts that he was giving his listeners. So there are multiple analogies that Paul uses. And in 2 Timothy chapter 2, Paul is instructing his mentee, his spiritual son, Timothy, and he gives him three metaphors for a man of God, how that man is to act. And he gives us these really full picture analogies. They're all through scripture, but in 2 Timothy chapter two, we see three distinct analogies. We see that he will call Timothy a soldier. He'll also reference him as an athlete and he'll talk about him as a farmer, a workman. And in future episodes, I want to break down what all of those hold for us. What are the secrets? Why did he use those terms? And what does that specifically mean to us? And what can we apply in our lives today? But for right now and for today's show, I want to break down the athlete metaphor. And if you are a listener of the show, you probably are into taking care of yourself. Part of raising the standard is raising the standard in all aspects of our life, putting the Lord first in everything that number one, Jesus is the standard for the way we live and conduct ourselves, but also raising the standards in our area of fitness, family, faith, finance, with our friendships, and looking to up-level every area of our life. So if that's you, you're in the right place. And today I want to talk about specifically this analogy of the athlete, because this has captured me. And when we see the analogies, the parallels between the athletes of the day in scripture that Paul is referencing and what he instructs us from a spiritual aspect to walk out and the lessons we can take from athletics, from sport, and from the elite level athletes that are in the backdrop while he's writing these letters, it is truly phenomenal. So right now, guys, if you have a friend who wants to level up in life, who's looking to reach his full potential, who's a follower of Jesus and knows there's more to life than just chasing status, then go ahead and forward the show to them right now. Just send it on, invite them to listen, because I'm talking to kingdom-driven men that are ready to take it to the next level and that are pursuing the best, the highest call, what Paul will call the upward call in life. And today we're going to break down what does the secret of the athlete hold for us as seen in scripture. And guys, I'm so obsessed with this that that's actually my Instagram handle. You can see Kingdom Athlete on Instagram and Facebook. If you want to follow me, connect with me, give me feedback on the show, or tell me what you want to see visited on the show in future episodes, drop me a note, send me a DM, and you can find me and follow me at Kingdom Athlete. 
Okay, so let's get right into the meat of today's episode and the meat of the word, which is what Paul talks about. And he instructs us as men to study to show ourselves approved. And there is going to be some study required for us if we truly want to unlock all that the scriptures hold for us. There's multiple ways we engage with the Lord. We talk about those on this show, and I'll continue to talk about them. But one of the ways is through study. So I want to share with you the result of some of my study and my background as I dug into into what secret does the athlete hold for us? Why does Paul reference athletics? Why does he talk about the athlete in multiple dimensions, not just in one book, but in multiple books of the New Testament? And when you see some of the references I'm going to drop on today's show, it may be new to you where you even see for the first time, I didn't realize that was a sporting reference. I didn't realize he was referencing a current event that was happening in that history, in that context in time that they would have understood through the lens of a spectator watching a sport or an athlete competing in a sport. So as we get into this, I mentioned there's multiple references. Let me just drop a couple. You know, Paul's going to talk a lot about sports, athletes in 1 Corinthians. It's going to be chapter 4, chapter 9. In Philippians, he's going to talk about running the race. In Hebrews chapter 12, we're going to see a lot around sports, warnings, um, admonitions to pursue our best, to follow the call, and to press on. So let's first understand what's happening in the context as Paul is writing these letters, because there's something happening in the background that he was using that the listeners of his day would fully understand, and that is the Olympic Games. So there were two sets of games. There was the Isthmian Games and also the Olympic Games. One happened every two years, one happened every four years, and there's multiple events in these games. Now, I'm not going to go super detailed on this. You can look into it if you want more detail on the 10 events that make up the games and all the references there. I want to hit it from a high level and point out a few things as Paul's referencing these games, these athletes, and what his listeners would have understood this as. And more importantly, what does this have to do with us today? And how can we grab a hold of it and apply it practically to our everyday life? Okay, so it's important to understand that just like modern day America, where we gather around the television and sports and entertainment seems to be the altar for most men and for our society at large, it was very similar in the times of the New Testament. The audience of the day would gather around these Olympic games. This was their entertainment. This is what happened within the Colosseum. The Colosseum was built for the main purpose of entertainment and providing a place for everyone to gather around a national shrine. This was their altar. This was the altar of the day, just like it is in America. Worship sports, worship athletes, worship those that you want to model yourself after. And it was purely around entertainment and overindulgence. So let me give you a few bullet points that just make up and provide some more context to what's happening at this time in history. So this was the Greek mindset. This was the Greeks that brought forth the Olympic Games and the concept of a gymnasium. And the gymnasium was also referenced as the academy. It was not just for physical bettering yourself. It was also for mental and physical training together. Now, if you were an athlete competing in first century games, there was a 10-month preparation period. You had to go through strict preparation to even be entered or have a chance or an opportunity to compete in the game. So we see this concept of intense diligence, discipline, and preparation to even get into the games. We also see 10 different events in the games. I'm going to highlight just a few of those events that Paul will use as an analogy to what we are encountering in our spiritual walk and our spiritual life. Now, before the game started, there were festivals, there were songs, there were musicians, there were poems. They actually honored all the athletes with songs and statues. So this is the ancient day equivalent of social media and having idols of your stars and putting all these people in the forefront and preeminence, just like we do with our modern day athletes, actresses, songwriters, and musicians. And we also see there was these amphitheaters that were constructed, these huge coliseums, and there was multiple amphitheaters where they would hold the games and where spectators could come to watch, where umpires would come to call the games, would hold the athletes accountable to the rules. And we're going to see these referenced in scripture. 
So that's a really high level of what you would see with the Roman games that are occurring in the first century as the Apostle Paul is writing the New Testament. So let's talk about the keys and some of the references that he makes. And really, what does this mean for us? So let's talk about the references that are made in scripture that reference the games because there's multiple references and I want to point out just a few and really talk about how this applies to us in our life today. So we know the games were surrounded with audiences and in Hebrews 12, the writer of Hebrews will say, we are surrounded by a great cloud of witnesses. And that's a direct reference to the amphitheater, to the spectators that were watching those sports and those brutal battles that were occurring in the Colosseum. We also have references in Revelation to a stone that was given to someone one, a white stone. That's also a reference to a ceremony that would happen at the Olympic Games. We know there's victor's wreaths and victor's crowns in the games and also for the spiritual inheritance and battle and race that is ahead of us. We know that every overcomer gets a crown in the book of Revelation. And just like the athletes had to understand the rules of the game, Paul will tell us we must understand the rules of the game that we're in. And if anyone does not compete according to the rules, he could be disqualified. So there's three different types of games that I want to reference right now that apply to us. We know there was a race, and Paul will talk about running the race most often. This was the metaphor or the analogy he would use all throughout Scripture, and this is the number one analogy he uses when it comes to athletics. He's pressing towards the goal of the upward prize. He has got his eyes fixed on the finish line, and he's in this race. And that race for you and I references the race with the heavenly finish line, that that calling that we're trying to apprehend, the highest call, the highest crown, the highest reward that we can get to give to Jesus. And that race is about us pursuing the Lord here on earth. The other metaphor we see is boxing, and Paul will reference boxing quite a bit, and he'll talk about this in 1 Corinthians 9, and there is a connotation to self-discipline. He says he brings himself under discipline. He actually buffets his body. And when he uses the analogy of boxing, he's talking about buffeting himself, using self-discipline and self-mastery and diligence to bring his nature under control. So we see the race is about our race finishing well and getting the prize, the reward that the Lord has for us. And we see that boxing is about bringing under discipline the energies of the flesh, anything in us of the natural man that wants to strive against what the Lord is calling us to. And then lastly, we see wrestling and wrestling always references an opponent, the enemy beneath us. So I can summarize it this way, guys. The race is for what's ahead of us. The boxing is for the opposition within us. And the wrestling is for the enemy beneath us, that we are actually wrestling principalities, darkness, and forces that are not people, but that is what our fight is against. That's the battle that we are in. And that is what Paul is calling to the attention of his listeners. Okay, guys, so let's make this really actionable for us. What is scripture instructing us? What is Paul saying through all these metaphors? And what is the key of the athlete? What does the athlete metaphor hold for you and I right now today? And what can we apply in our life? So I'm going to give you some things right now. Number one, there's a goal and you can reach the goal. You're going to have to apply your strength, your focus, your intent, and you must concentrate on the race set before you. Here's another one. You must persevere. You know, an athlete has fatigue. We get worn out as we're in athletics, when we're training in the gym. If you're in a race, sometimes you feel like giving up and we need to keep our eyes on the prize and keep pushing forward despite pain, despite fatigue. And that is another reference for us in our spiritual walk. Okay, be careful not to stumble. In the world, we have obstacles. In the race, there's obstacles. There's things we have to hurdle over. There's things we have to maneuver around. And Paul is also instructing us, don't stumble. Be careful. Watch where you're going. Be alert. Walk and run in a manner that's worthy of your call. Watch where you're going. 
and we must be determined to win. No one enters a race because they want to lose or get second place. If you're entering a race, it's because you want to win. Guys, when you compete in the gym, I hope you're leaving it all in the gym, that you're going all out and not just going through the motions. And that's what Paul is instructing us to do. Guys, the Bible is so actionable. There's so much here that we can take from it. So get into it, follow the directions, be led by the spirit and give it your all. Leave it all on the field and go after the high call with all the energy that God is giving you to run after the call that's on your life. So what is this going to take? And what's the lessons from the athlete that we can draw for ourselves right now? Guys, there's preparation. We know there was a preparation period for these first century games, 10 months just to get ready. It took discipline, right? We know there's rules to the games and we knew there was obstacles and also opponents. So be aware of your opponents, the obstacles, the preparation, the diligence, and the discipline that we need to embark on this journey. Okay, so I want to bring it home with this. Okay, here's my summary, guys, for what we can do right now. Many of you know how to get in shape. I'm sure you know a friend right now. We don't need more information. The internet's flooded with information. You guys know what to do if you want to get in shape. You know what to do if you want to drop body fat, if you want to get stronger. It's not a question of knowing what to do most of the time. It's a question of doing it. So the message of the athlete is action. It's someone who steps off the sidelines and gets in the game. It's not just knowing what to do. It's actually doing it. It's actually taking action and moving forward. So guys, if I'm trying to motivate you or inspire you today, it's to take action and go after something in your life that God is calling you to do. If you know you're supposed to do it, then do it. The other lesson we see is that all weakness can be overcome. And I'm talking about spiritual weakness as well as physical weakness. If you want to overcome something, you can do it if you are focused, if you want to. It starts with the desire to want to beat something. If you're seeing a pattern or a cycle in your life, something that's a weakness to you, you can beat it, but it's going to require some training. It's going to require you to get up and do something. And that's something that the athletes do is the self-mastery that comes through self-denial. If you want to beat the flesh, you have to deny the flesh. Now, here's the good news, guys. We're not doing this just out of willpower and sheer strength you know, just mustering it up on our own. We are infused with the power of the Holy Spirit to live a spirit-filled life, an energized life through the Spirit as long as we're getting our spiritual nutrition and we are dependent upon the Lord. This comes through the Word of God. This comes through resting, through waiting in His presence, through pursuing Him and knowing that He's with us to meet every single need that we face. So I referenced a couple scriptures today of where Paul draws upon these athletic metaphors. I want to draw your attention to Hebrews chapter 12. And in this chapter, you're going to see something, and I'm going to give you homework today. If you want to go deeper into this, read Hebrews chapter 12. It's going to talk about the cloud of witnesses, and there's going to be one word that jumps off the page, and that word is discipline. You're going to see it as a theme throughout the whole chapter, and count it up for yourself and see how much the writer of this chapter is focusing on a disciplined lifestyle and the discipline of the Father that we must submit to if we want to finish our course well. So this is what sons of God do. They are submitted. Guys, if you're fathers, you know your children to be good sons, to be good children. They need to be obedient to the instruction that you give them. It's the same way for us. If we want to finish our race well, if we want to overcome in the battle, if we want to win, we must be obedient to the word of God, what he's telling you right now, and also what is expressed through the written word of God that we can apply to our lives. So when we talk about this metaphor of the athlete, it's not purely done in our own strength. We are energized with the spirit of God. It's to live a spirit-filled life in a spirit-led life. The Christian life is not to be lived in our own effort. It's not something we try harder to do. It's someone we submit to. We submit to Jesus and we allow him to lead us as we surrender our own strength, our natural strength, to be infused with the energy of his spirit. So guys, as we wrap this up with all the keys of the athletic metaphors in scripture, here's what I want you to remember, that Jesus is the standard for men. He sets the standard in the fight. 
He sets the standard in the race. He's the pioneer, he's the firstborn, and he is the ultimate finisher. And because he modeled a life that overcame, he modeled a life that finished well, we can do the same thing as we follow him. He's our example in practical victory. He's our example by being steadfast in suffering. And he's our example by never growing weary and obtaining the crown. And because he did it, and he did it as a man, you can do it as a man. You can do it right now where you're at through the energy of Jesus Christ who strengthens you to accomplish all things that he calls you to accomplish. So when we talk about modeling Jesus and following him as the standard, what I'm saying is that because he carried a cross and instructed us to do the same, that we must pick up our cross every day, deny ourselves, and follow him. Without a cross, there's no crown. And without a battle, there's no victory. Guys, let's raise the standard and let's get after it. Hey guys, I wrote a book that went on to become a bestseller. It's called The Standard, Discovering Jesus as the Standard for Masculinity. I would love for you to get this. It's available on Amazon right now. But if you visit standard59.com, you can get the first chapter of the book for free. I wanna give you the chapter called Jesus Has a Plan. And you need a plan as well. There's specific areas in your life that you will be attacked in. How do I know? Because Jesus was attacked in these areas as well, and there's a pattern to it. And I wanna give you this chapter so you can see how Jesus effectively deploys a plan in his life and how he sets the standard for all men to follow and why we need a plan as well. If you want that chapter, go over to standard59.com and grab it. If you wanna get the book, you can get the book on amazon.com. Thanks for watching today's video. And if something resonated with you, please leave a comment below. Let us know what it was. Tell us what you would like us to explore for future episodes. Go ahead, like this video, subscribe to the channel and continue to raise the standard.